so we begin, uh, and I would like you to, to think of, of, uh, of this horizontal plan that we are animals in, in the same uh, plane as, as all the other animals on Earth. This horizontal in a, a horizontalness that we, that we can put ourselves into, it has always been a necessity to, to relate to the other, to the objects that we uh, handle, to the other organisms that we, that we see, to the, to the place that we live in. We are the only ones who want to create meaning with this relationship. Uh, and I think this is very exclusively human. And I think this is very much an impulse of art. I think it's the main drive for art. So, we've been manipulating uh, organisms for a very long time. And uh, we've been doing it without understanding the processes involved in, in, in making them. And we've been very uh, efficient at making it. And we've been very efficient at, at creating new organisms. More than adapting ourselves, we adapt the environment uh, for us. The other thing I want you to think about is that we do it, and we have been doing it for a long time, not just for practical reasons. It's not very difficult to think that we did it uh, for um, ulterior reasons. And so, and in some ways, I think they're closer to, uh, to aesthetic reasons. Uh, it, it may not be for art as we understand it now, but we've always, as, 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 as humans, always did something extra to every uh, tool that we made. It's not just uh, practical tools. We always added something to them to make them more special, to make them more meaningful. So, we have been manipulating and we didn't know how, uh, how, how it was happening. We, we, we were successful in doing it, but we didn't know exactly what was involved in it. And it was until very recently that we started to get some lights uh, into, into the processes involved. Uh, so it was uh, with uh, Charles Darwin that we began to understand uh, uh, quite a bit more about evolution. He was the first to, to tell us that there was such a thing as evolution. And with uh, Gregor Mendel, the theory of heredity uh, and, and how uh, uh, some uh, characteristics of ourselves could be uh, passed on to our descendants. From then, biology or the study of biology has um, evolved itself extremely fast. Uh, and uh, with the reveal of the structure of the molecule of DNA from Watson and Crick, Suddenly, we, uh, we, it dawned on us that we could have the ability to manipulate the, the, what we thought then was the essence of, of life itself. So, we thought then, and uh, we still think now, that it, it is possible uh, to change you know, cells and organisms uh, very precisely. The problem is what, what happens after, uh? <laughs> uh, more than anything else. Science has evolved very fast, and the knowledge has uh, grown exponentially with all these people being very focused on finding new things. Uh, and the public, or society in general, uh, has also been exposed to all this new uh, knowledge in, a, in, a, in a, a strange way. Well, science has been developing, and traditionally science is developed closed inside laboratories. It, it, it's a very recent thing that science needs to explain themselves, or, or to actually uh, uh, make a bridge between uh, scientific knowledge and general society. We need to be able to understand what they're doing. We need to, it's, information is incredibly valuable now, and scientific information for the public to understand how it works. It's, it's very important, but it's very difficult. I, myself, who work with scientists every day, I have difficulty understanding what they're talking about. And, and I make a, a very a, a strong effort to understand. And I, I don't expect someone who's working in a bank to have the same time to make that effort to understand. At the same time, it's, these are very complicated things. It's not possible to, 
well, there's a very big danger of, of uh, minimizing what they're doing if they try very hard to simplify it too much. I have a lot of problem with science, science uh, museums nowadays who are very didactic, but at the same time they're not, they're not even uh, making the point across. They're trying to explain very simply to children and to adults uh, what is genetics. And, 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 and really when you go into a lab, the, the bridge is still, the gap is still so wide from what you see in a science museum nowadays and from what you go into the lab and look at. And that it, it's, it's discouraging, really. It's, it's like, how can we ever, how will it ever be possible to, to make these two, th these two spheres of the scientific knowledge come closer? It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very difficult. Uh, and, and to go back to art, uh, I find that very often it's even harder to try and explain the way art processes now to what the general public uh, understands. And I think uh, that though science has understood the need to, to try, at least, uh, even if in simple ter terms, to, to explain to the general public what, what is science researching uh, nowadays, art is still very reticent to do so. And I think it's absolutely uh, urgent that we, we start. It's very few places that have, like PAV, I was very surprised, that you have workshops constantly for the general public to come and understand what you're doing. You don't have many museums who try to do this. And they try even, they try to do it in, in um, very old-fashioned ways. You go into a, 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 a national gallery and you see the children drawing what they're looking at. And it, it doesn't help. Art for me is, is, is freedom, and, 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 and this is very important. Art for me is freedom to, to, to play, to play with concepts, to be, uh, uh, to be sarcastic, or playful, or just joke, or be very serious. You can do everything, uh, uh, with limits, of course. There's always the limit of, of, of respect for the next person. But art is the, is the activity I find that I can actually uh, go deep into any concept that I take for granted and be playful about it and joke with myself and joke with other people without it being offensive, necessarily. And it, it's a line that you cannot cross, I think. Many scientists see my work as a... a, a a hypothesis to try and explain, to make a point, their own point, through my art. I also make sure that they understand, yes, I am I'm very happy to make that point with you, but I need to make the point as well for art. So it's, it's a bridge, but it's a complex bridge. It's a bridge that tries to, 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 to be the bridge for both fields that need to cover that gap. The question that an artist makes is very different from the question that a scientist makes to the same object, to the same technique, to the same material. And that all of those are part of, of uh, our human uh, way of trying to bring meaning to the things that we, that we, we, we handle. To, again, to try and establish a relationship uh, with that other. And, and so I really like what I do because I think it's very rich in that aspect. And maybe it's easy, no? it's very easy for me to see that working with science, I'm not only breaking the, or making the bridge between art and science, I'm trying to make a bridge, a sort of like a triangle between art, science and society. And it's a plane that, that can have a sort of ramifications and that we can play with those ramifications. And it isn't easy because being, talking about this freedom, you always have to walk uh, between, uh, bo in the border. Uh, you have to walk with one foot uh, each side. And, and with science, this is an easy uh, uh, thing to do, because if you're inside a science laboratory, you're already with one foot on one side and uh, one foot on the other. So it is not very complicated to, to grow a third leg into society.